Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today, I am going to be servicing Yamaha's 2015 FJ09. This process is going to be almost identical for Yamaha's FZ09, the MT09, the Tracer 900. This is the same procedure that I do for all of my bikes to make sure that they are safe to ride before I take them out on the road. This motorcycle is a new purchase for me. It has right around 18,000 miles on it. And although it looks nice and shiny and everything looks good, I want to make sure that all of the mechanical items on the bike are within spec and the service on the bike is up to date. Okay, enough talk. Let's get to work. All right, before we begin, there are a few tools that we know that we're going to need here. First thing we need, we're going to need a 17 millimeter socket. That's to remove the oil drain bolt. We're definitely going to need a good quality air pressure gauge, which I have here. Also going to need a tool to measure the chain slack. I just use a small metal ruler. This is a six millimeter Allen. This will be for retorquing the handlebar pinch bolts. We're also going to need a tread depth gauge here, and this will also be used to measure the brake pad thicknesses. And finally, I've got a, this is a voltmeter. A few more tools needed for this job. To get to the air filter, we're going to need a four millimeter Allen, and that does most of them. We will also need a Phillips head screwdriver or Really, you should use a JIS screwdriver to do that. To remove the oil filter, I've got an oil filter wrench here. And to adjust the chain, you need to have a 27 millimeter uh, socket to loosen the nut there. It's also really good to have a checklist as you're going down through these items. And I have one made up that I use for all of my services and it just has all of the major systems that we're going over and so as I'm taking measurements and as I'm performing checks I'm actually checking it off on the checklist that just helps me remember and helps me not to miss anything here all right I like to start things off at the front wheel first thing we're going to do is we're going to inspect the tire I'm feeling it here. I'm looking for any dry rot, any cracks along the sidewall or between my tread grooves, any damage from, you know, road objects, rocks or nails or anything like that. I don't feel anything here. I don't see anything. That looks good. So that's a visual inspection of the tire. I will go ahead and take a couple of measurements on the tread depth of this. You want to measure a couple of different places. I'm getting a consistent 430 seconds on my front tread depth. The next thing I'm going to do is check the tire pressure. And the tire pressure on this bike, it runs 36 PSI in the front and it runs 42 PSI in the rear. So that's what I'm looking for. Beautiful, right at 36. Next thing I'm going to do is visually inspect the valve stem. I'm going to lean it over and I'm going to look for cracks anywhere along the base of it, anywhere along the length of that. I check on both sides. I have had one of these fail on me at about 70 miles an hour and I was very, very fortunate to get the bike stopped without wrecking the bike. So this valve stem looks perfect. We're going to move on since we're right here. We're also going to measure the front brake pads. And you want to visually inspect first, make sure that they've got meat on both sides of them. I'm actually going to measure the pad thickness with my tread depth gauge here. All right, looking at both sides, I'm getting right at uh, between four and five 30 seconds. So the brake pad thickness is good. We've checked those over. Also, while I'm right here, I'm gonna look at the fork seals. I see no leakage on the fork seals whatsoever. Those look great. 
while I'm here, my, inspe my state inspection sticker is on my left fork tube. I'm gonna look at that. It expires in June of 2023. So that's about seven months from now. So that is currently inspected. While I am at the front of the bike, I'm going to look at several things here in my control area. We're gonna start off with the brakes. And so I'm gonna just see what my lever feels like. It pulls very smoothly. The brakes are very firm. That feels great. Uh, the setting is right for my hands. That's a decent setting. I'm going to look at my front brake fluid here. And that looks good. That's well up on the sight glass. I have inspected this when I had a little bit better visibility on it and everything looks good. The brake fluid is clear and it is up to the proper level. Next thing I'm gonna do, since I'm right here, I'm gonna just check my throttle tension settings and you want just a little bit of play. Not much at all before it starts to open. And that is perfect. That's set very nicely. So I don't have to adjust that. If I did want to, I would simply move this back and use this adjuster to adjust it. The next thing I want to do here is check my clutch engagement. And so what you're looking for on your clutch engagement is just a little bit of play. It's got a little bit of play before it starts to disengage the clutch. The smooth action, the, it's an easy pull, everything looks good. And again, if I need to adjust anything, I can adjust it in or out right here. Since this bike is new to me and it has adjustable suspension, I'm also going to check on my levels here. And I checked, and this is actually five lines up from the tightest setting. So these are backed out, five lines. And they're backed out on each one the same. And that's what I'm looking for here. Because this bike is new to me, and I don't know if somebody has messed with the handlebar over time, I'm also going to just uh, use this Allen, 6 millimeter Allen, and I'm going to just check the tension, make sure that these are torqued down properly. And I have done that already, but I just, that's, that's kind of what I do. And just make sure, because, you know, God forbid you're out on the road and these handlebars rotate, that can definitely cause an accident. Moving on to the rear of the bike, I'm going to do a visual inspection on the tire here. I'm looking for any uh, damage that might have been done to the tire. I'm looking for any cuts or... Uh, I'm also looking for any dry rot around the edges or between the tread and everything really looks good there. So the next thing I'm going to do is check the tire pressure. It should be 42 PSI in this rear tire. Perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is check the valve stem for dry rot. Okay. This valve stem has dry rot. What I'm looking at is the cracks right there at the base of the valve stem. When I pulled it over, you can see those. That's dangerous. So this valve stem is going to need to be replaced. After a quick run to the Yamaha shop, I've got a new valve stem installed in the rear tire. I'm going to check my tire tread depth thickness here. My tread depth is 6 30 seconds in the rear. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to check the brake pad thickness in the rear. And the brake pad thickness is right at 5 30 seconds. My rear brake fluid level is where it should be, and it is clear, so that looks good. I'm happy with that. 
While I'm in here, I'm just going to do a visual inspection on the shop. And I can see just a little bit of it in there. That all looks good. I don't see any oil leaking from it. Everything underneath there is dry. And so that, that looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and measure my chain slack on this bike. Now this is a newer chain. So, so it goes from two inches to a little bit over three inches, about 3.1 inches. And so that's perfect. It's a little bit over an inch. And I know the Yamaha recommends having this really, really banjo tight. And a lot of the forums just say that it's just too tight, the spec from Yamaha. So I'll check this in a couple places, but you know, you can do what you want. You make your own decision on that. But for me, I run this a little bit looser than one full inch of slack here. And I'll measure this several places, make sure that that's consistent. In addition to checking the chain tension, I also check chain cleanliness and lubrication. And this chain looks great. So the previous owner has maintained this well. I was informed that it was a brand new chain about a thousand miles ago, uh, which again is great. I didn't see any tight spots on the chain. Everything just looks good. So I also look at my sprockets for any unnatural wear or grooves and that looks great. You want to check for missing teeth and there are none. So again, everything with a chain of sprockets looks really, really nice. The next thing I'm going to do is check my lights and my horn. And to do this, I'm going to start the bike up. So that's my high beams, my low beams. my turn signal there and then on the other side and the running lights are above the headlights on this bike so those also function as they should and the horn works fine so we can see my running brake lights are functioning we can also see right here that the license plate light is working so I'm going to check the brake lights for the front of the bike. And those work like they should. The rear of the bike, those function like they should. And the turn signals. And those all function like they should. So that looks great on our lights and our horn. All right, my fan just kicked on and I'm waiting for it to turn off again. And it just turned off. So the cooling fan is functioning like it should. The FJ has a coolant sight glass here. And so what I'm going to do is actually take a flashlight. I'm going to shine it back on the reservoir itself. And so when I do that, you can see that the coolant level is between the upper and lower lines. And that is where it should be. That's great. After removing the seat, we also want to check the battery connections here. Make sure that your battery connection bolts are tight. And these are nice and tight, nice and snug. I've checked those. So it's always a good idea, even if your charging system is working great, if you've got a loose connector, it can cause you to go dead on the road, which you don't want. So once the bike is warmed up, what I like to do is I'm going to check my running voltage hot and so i've got a battery tender lead here i'm going to pull that off i'm going to use a voltmeter set on 20 volts dc to check the running voltage the hot always goes in the side here the negative is always the the black lead always goes to the exposed end here So my voltage was holding rock steady on 14.2 volts, and that is perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check the air filter. It's a little bit involved, so I'm going to put the camera on time lapse here, and you can watch what I'm doing.
As you can see, I am in need of a new air filter here. This one's just pretty gross. So we'll go ahead and replace it while we're in here. That's the Yamaha part number right there. Due to the nature of lots of small bits and the amount of work you have to do to get to the air filter, I would recommend, this is probably at least a level two or level three job. It's not for somebody who doesn't know which end of a wrench is which. And so, I would just recommend if you don't know what you're doing, probably take it to the dealer. It is a little bit more involved. It's, it's not rocket science, but you just, you have to have a little bit of finesse. There's tabs that you can easily break off if you start uh, muscling things about. So you don't want to be a gorilla while you're in here. And you just want to work very methodically and slowly as you go through this. I'm taking out the drain bolt here. The oil honestly looks super clean, but this is just for peace of mind here. With an oil filter wrench on here, I'm gonna remove the old oil filter. let that drain for a bit. While I'm in there I'm going to install the new crush washer on the drain bolt. Here is the new Yamaha oil filter that's going on and I will actually pre-fill that with a little bit of oil uh, just holding it upright and, and pouring a little bit of oil in there a couple times clean oil and that way it doesn't take quite as long when I start the bike up after the oil change it won't take as long to build oil pressure in the motor. I'm using Yamalube 1040. And like I said, I'm going to pre-fill the oil filter a couple of times. Let that settle. And let that settle. And then we'll go ahead, once that settles, I'll spin that on. I'm just going to wipe the oil seal around where the oil filter goes with a clean paper towel. And you just want a nice seat for your new oil filter. Even though this is a horizontal oil filter, I got no drippage out. Even though I pre-filled it. So there you go. And you wanna tighten this down. I usually make them about as tight as I can by hand. You don't wanna over tighten these with an oil filter wrench or they'll be almost impossible to get off. All right, and finally the drain bolt is snug. That's good to go. According to Yamaha, this motorcycle takes about 2.83 quarts of oil. And so that's what I'm going to start with. 
uh, and I'm going to be pouring it in through a clean funnel here and then I'm going to be watching down here on my sight glass to make sure that my level is correct. Our final oil level here. I did start the bike and run it for a couple of minutes and then I shut it off, let it sit for about five minutes. But the oil level is right at the top mark, which is exactly where we want it to be. And the oil change is complete. All right, well that wraps up the service. We have changed the oil, we've checked the air filter, we have checked the tires, we've checked the braking system, we've checked the controls, and I am now confident that I can ride this bike and it will be a safe place to be. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, enjoy the ride.